So now that we are down to two GOP candidates, why is there so much infighting still taking place in those GOP caucuses? Doesn't Romney pretty much have the nomination now? Ben has the reality check you won't see anywhere else. And then there were two. Former Massachusetts Governor Mitt Romney and Texas Congressman Ron Paul are the only two candidates still vying for the Republican nomination. Tonight I'm going to show you two things. More of the fighting over delegates in Washington State and explain why that fighting is intensifying. Let's start in King County, Washington. The state of Washington has been holding its delegate caucuses as they're sending delegates on to the state convention, which will be held May 31st through June 2nd. Now, in order to choose those delegates, Washington is holding these delegate caucuses. And here's what happened in the King County 37th District Caucus over the weekend. The GOP representative is Lori Sotelo. Sotelo conducts the business of the caucus by holding a floor vote for a caucus chairman. And it happens correctly according to the rules. The problems start when a woman named Tamara Smilinich is voted in as caucus chairman. Sotelo begins to argue that because Tamara is a known Ron Paul supporter, the caucus cannot continue. Listen. Ron Paul campaign does not have authority to rent this room. They have not provided insurance for this building. And Ron Paul campaign, if, if Cameron Smilnich is a member of the Ron Paul campaign, you do not She's not paid by the Ron Paul campaign. Yes, You're the backup and you, are, you do not have authority to run the meeting in this building. To be clear on what is being said here, Sotelo claims that Smilinich is a Ron Paul operative. And therefore, in order for the caucus to continue, the Ron Paul campaign would have to pay for the insurance on the building and pay to rent the venue. Which, of course, doesn't make sense at all. Nevertheless. What I tried to explain to Tamara, what I explained to the Ron Paul campaign and their national campaign, and what I explained to Cameron in private is that when a campaign, a political campaign, takes over a caucus, they are now the national campaign responsible for providing insurance, providing balloting, providing the liability for anything that goes on in this building. The majority of people in the room begin to argue with Sotelo, asking what being elected caucus chair has to do with insurance liability. And then they even ask where the rule can be found in the list of Washington State GOP rules. Can I request that, uh, that the chair of the county party show us in the rules where it says that if a operative or not operative of any particular uh, campaign gets elected to uh, the chair position, um, that then that campaign is then required to pay for the insurance and pay the rent. Where, where's, the, where's that in the rules? And once again, the rules are not being followed. So the caucus is actually moved outside, where Emily Rinsink, who took much of that video, tells me that 11 delegates were voted on. There were 11 total, and we got all 11 delegates for Ron Paul. I feel like there's this impression of Ron Paul supporters that we're here just to be disruptive and to infiltrate the party, but... And I can only speak for myself, but that's that's not what it's about. We want to get involved. I'm genuinely a conservative, and I just want to get involved in the Republican Party. So why is there such a fight in the Republican Party? Isn't it really all over? Didn't Romney already pretty much lock up the nomination? Well, actually, no. And this is what I've been telling you for months now. At its state convention, Washington will select 43 delegates to the RNC. Now, according to the delegate count on RealClearPolitics.com, in the state of Washington, Mitt Romney has 25 of those delegates already in his corner. Ron Paul has eight. But that's not true, because in the state of Washington, none of those delegates have been selected. Another example, the state of Iowa, which will send 28 delegates to the RNC. Iowa. Real Clear Politics says Romney has six, Santorum seven, and Paul has one. But it's not true. Actually, in Iowa, half of the delegates were just selected over the weekend. 13 people who will choose 13 delegates. And now we know 13 slots, Ron Paul delegates. The other 10, we don't know yet. One more for you. The state of Minnesota, which will send 40 delegates on to Tampa. In Minnesota, half of the delegates are called congressional district delegates, the other half at-large delegates. Well, 
The state of Minnesota voted over the weekend for the congressional district delegates, and here's what we know. 20 of the 24 went to Ron Paul. The other 13 will be voted on May 18th and 19th. And that's what you need to know. A month ago, not one media source other than Reality Check was correctly counting delegates. Therefore, you had no idea that Ron Paul or any other candidate could still win Minnesota or Iowa. Many people thought it was a done deal. And yet, it just happened. And that's why the fight in the Republican ranks is not over. Every state with unbound delegates is now a battleground for those delegates. And that is Reality Check. If you would like to make your voice heard on the story, head over to Ben's Facebook page. You can find it by searching Ben Swan WXIX.